I've got the six best budget Ableton controllers right here and I've tested them all. So which one is right for you? Let's find out. And watch till the end because if you've got a little bit more money to spend, I'll talk about a couple controllers you should check out as well. But for now, let's stick to the budget controllers. In this video, I'll compare features, quality, cost, intuitiveness of control, and more. You'll notice I have both keyboard and pad controllers in this video. I will comment on the pad and key feel so you get the full picture. Each one offers unique benefits and drawbacks, and I'll address the most important in this video. If you're new around here, I'm Sanjay C. I have lots of videos of keyboards, controllers, plugins, and studio gear on my channel. Consider subscribing. I get straight to the point in my videos and tutorials. Let's get started. If you need a controller with a very small footprint and includes knobs and pads that feel really good for finger drumming, get the PreSonus Atom. The Atom is just a little bit bigger than the Launchpad Mini, so it's super portable. When I first tried this, the feel of the pads was my focus. They feel just right. I love finger drumming on them, but this is a comparison of Ableton control features, so I'll move on to that. The PreSonus Atoms pads also function as clip and scene launchers in Ableton. And the color of the pads correspond to what you see in Ableton. The form factor makes everything easy and intuitive to control. You can launch clips by pressing them, and then shift, and pressing one of these pads launches the scene. You have fewer pads and other controllers in this roundup, but the Atom has navigation buttons to help that. Still, if your Ableton sessions get really big, you may miss the extra pads. The placement of the function buttons is just right. Play, stop, record, and click, they're all in the perfect spot. And you've got knobs as well. The knobs control the mixer volume, and you can change the function of the knobs using the setup button and switching to pans, or sends. The buttons on the side allow you to show or hide the devices and switch from session to arrangement views. The select button on the right also allows you to arm, solo, or mute tracks. I mean, you've got so much control in such a small device. So what are the downsides to the Atom? Well, you don't get as many clip launching pads as the launch pads and the Akai devices in this roundup. And it's on the higher end of the price range but this is an excellent choice for finger drumming. Let's look at the other controller that's really good for finger drumming next. The Novation Launchpad X is the same price as the PreSonus Atom, but wow, it looks different. And it really feels like a more premium product. It's got some weight to it, and the materials feel excellent. The launch pads have the most intuitive layout for Ableton clip launching in this roundup. This is mainly due to the 64 pad layout and the eight scene launchers. It makes sense right away. You can launch clips and scenes, and even navigate through your session view. The pads also function as drum or note triggers and are velocity sensitive on the Launchpad X. So play drums and even play notes. If you've got a large drum kit, wow, you can see it all right here. And the pads feel great. The pads are smaller than the PreSonus Atom, but still feature really good velocity sensitivity. Now, it looks like something's missing, right? knobs. Well, that's true, but you can still control your mixer in a very innovative way using the pads. Check it out. I'm adjusting the volumes. And the same goes with the pans and the sends. You've also got extra functions on the bottom row. You can choose to stop clips, mute, solo, or record arm any of the tracks. Novation has also included the Capture MIDI 
button. If you play something awesome and forget to hit record, this will save you. The Launchpad X also features custom configurations, which you can set up using the Novation Components program. The mini version of the Launchpad is a nice option if you need something smaller and cheaper. I'll show you that later in the video. So lots of good things and it's well deserved. But any drawbacks? Well, I wish it had a dedicated stop button. The PreSonus and Akai controllers in this comparison have a dedicated stop all button, which means pressing that button, no matter what you're doing, will stop all the clips. Now you can mimic this feature by leaving a row empty, but sometimes I just need to stop and not fiddle with settings to get to that stop all clips. Also, the Launchpad X doesn't have device control out of the box, so you can't just adjust parameters in Ableton instruments and effects. The launch key and Akai devices in this roundup can do that. Also, if you want knobs or faders, you're not going to get them with the launch pads. But Novation does have some knobs on its launch key keyboard and it has Ableton device control too. Let's look at that next. Before we do, if you want full size keys from Novation, they just released their brand new launch key Mark III. It comes in 25, 37, 49, and 61 key versions. Watch my review here. If you're a keyboardist and want the most Ableton features you can find in a keyboard, get the Novation Launch Key Mini Mark III. The Launch Key series of keyboards are the best keyboard controllers for Ableton out there right now. And they're a great choice if you don't need all the pads on the launch pads. You've still got clip launching, but you just have two visible rows at one time. Of course, you can navigate the rows by pressing shift and up and down, but it's certainly not as nice as having many rows visible, which is why I included the Akai APC keyboard in this roundup as well. Now with the launch key, if you think that all you're getting extra are keys, you'll be surprised. The launch key has lots of other nice features. It has excellent device control for Ableton devices. And you can control volume, pans, and sends with the knobs. Also, if you like messing with arpeggiators, it's got an extensive arpeggiator tool built in. And thank you, Novation, a dedicated play stop button. If you wanna watch my full review of the Launch Key Mini Mark III, watch my video here. I cover live looping, drum pads, MIDI, and more. The only issue I have with the Launch Key Mini is the key feel. The keys are a little loud if you bang on them, and they don't have the best quality in my opinion. I actually prefer the Akai APC in this area. We'll look at that next. The Akai APC Key 25 is showing its age, but it's still the best option for traveling and performing with large Ableton sessions if you're a keyboardist for two reasons. First, you've got lots of clip launching pads, 40 total, and scene launching buttons as well. You've got mixer controls for volume, pans, and sends. It's even got device control like the launch key, so you can control your Ableton instruments and effects. The key bed feels a little better than the launch key, but still with many keys, keep your expectations in check. I love the dedicated stop all clips button and the knobs feel pretty good too. But this keyboard has some drawbacks. While you've got lots of clip pads, they are not color matched to your Ableton session. Instead, they light up yellow if there's a clip there or green if it's playing and red if it's recording. And you can't use the pads for finger drumming. That could be a deal breaker for you. You've got scene launchers to the right side and those same scene launchers can be used to stop clips, solo, record arm, mute, or even select tracks. If you're looking to score a really good deal, you'll probably find lots of these on the used market since they've been out for a while. If you need lots of clip launching pads, this is a great keyboard for you. If you're not a keyboardist and prefer faders, you may wanna check out the next device. The Akai APC Mini is very focused on two things, mixing and launching clips in session view. And for those two functions, it does pretty well. You can buy it for $99, but check the used market. You can find decent deals on these. You've got a lot of clips to launch, 64 in total, and you can launch scenes with the buttons on the right side. I really like the dedicated stop all clips button, just like the keyboard version. And you can also navigate your session view with the buttons at the bottom. 
As far as mixer control, you've got eight track faders and the ninth is for the master fader and they feel pretty decent. You can change these from controlling volume to also controlling pan, sends, and even controlling your devices. But it's much more fun controlling volumes with these faders. They feel very natural. You can use the scene launching buttons to also control solo, record arm, mute, and track select. So you've got all the basics, but that's it. You can't play tunes or drums on these pads. It's really just a mixer and clip launcher. The clip buttons also don't match the colors in Ableton. It's kind of like the keyboard version. They're yellow if there's a clip there, and they're green if they're playing. Honestly, for what you're paying for this device, I'd go with the keyboard version, unless you really want the fader feel. Lastly, the APC Mini feels pretty cheap. It's not up to the standard of the Launchpad X or even the Launchpad Mini, which we'll take a look at next. All right, last is the smallest device in this comparison. It's the Launchpad Mini. Excellent for portability. The Launchpad Mini at first glance just looks like a miniaturized version of the Launchpad X, but there are more differences which I'll cover. You've got the same 64 pads, but smaller than the Launchpad X, and the pads feel different. They have more travel distance when you press them and they're more squishy to the touch. The pads are matched to the colors of the clips in Ableton, which is nice. And you've got scene launching as well and scene navigation. If you're trying to use this to play drums and instrument notes, you're going to miss one big feature, velocity sensitivity. So every time you press a pad, the volume of the note's gonna be the same. You still have the bottom row of functions like on the X, you can choose to either stop, solo, or mute tracks. Now you don't have any controls for your mixer, so there's no volume, pan, or sends, even with the pads like how we saw on the Launchpad X. But it does have a user mode feature, which lets you create custom controls using MIDI CCs. You could even program the pads to act as faders if you want, but it requires some manual setup and manual mapping in Ableton. It's not as elegant as the Launchpad X. As a strict Ableton session controller, the Launchpad Mini is great, especially because of its size, but it really stops there. Even the Akai APC Mini offers a bit more with its row of faders, but you can't use the Akai to play drums and notes like you can with the Launchpad Mini. So what if you've got some extra cash? Well, the king of Ableton controllers, in my opinion, is the Ableton Push 2. It just takes Ableton control to a whole new level. And if you're heavy into session view and performance, it doesn't get better than that. If you're a keyboardist, I highly suggest you look into the Novation LaunchKey Mark III keyboards, which are a little bit more expensive than the devices in this comparison, but they have larger keys. Finally, the ultimate keyboardist companion for Ableton Live is the Novation SL Mark III. Wow. Check out my review of the SL Mark III here. I hope you enjoyed this comparison of budget Ableton controllers. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Keep making the music you love. And hey, check out one of these videos next. <laughs>